Hey guys, welcome back to Homestead Prepping and Survival. Today I want to talk about um, those people that you always meet. Especially when you're a public prepper like I am. There's a lot of other people out there. Most preppers are private. So, everybody that preps at some point in time has people that comment, well, I'll just come to your house. And most of the time, most of the time, if it's not family and stuff, my response is, that's why I have bullets. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, I'm joking with that. But the point being, you know, you've got to protect what you've what you've worked your butt off to prep. So I saw this thing, I don't know, 10 years or more ago, and it was a list of what people need to bring with them when they come to your house uh, for bugging out crap hit the fan, okay? So what I did was today I went and made my own little list because I couldn't find one anywhere. And I made my own, so I'm going to start it and you'll see i'm gonna use that as the the picture i took of it me just holding it up so that those that want to look at the list can you know save the picture crop it whatever you want to do and uh use it if that's what you want to do it doesn't bother me at all but anyway so on the very top i put so you want to bug out to my house so in, in most cases, especially with family and close friends, I say, okay, you or y'all are welcome. So bring the following with you, okay? Food, enough to feed 2,000 calories per day per person. And typically, if they're bugging out into my house, I want a three to six month supply of food, minimum, when they show up, okay? It's a lot of food. They need to get busy, don't they? So, and then water. Enough for two gallons per person per day for a minimum of three months. I prefer six months, just like with the food. That's a lot. Well, hello, ladybug. Stupid things. Attracted to people that won't, don't like them. All right, and then um, clothing. Bring enough for each person sized accordingly. For hot and cold weather, washing clothes will be a chore. If you don't have your electric washing machine going back there, how are you going to wash clothes? You've seen the old westerns where they used to wash board and scrub them and wash them in the creek and all that. It's going to be a lot of that going on if there's no electricity. So, you know, people need to think about that. They need to bring clothes. Unless you're going to buy clothes to fit a whole lot of different people in different shapes and sizes... They need to bring clothes. So, and then medicines. Now, especially when you get older like me, I'm in my mid-50s. And, uh, you know, you don't treat yourself right your whole life. So when you start getting up there in those years, you need more and more medicine every day. So I take a blood pressure pill. I take a cholesterol pill. And then I take like a fish oil vitamin, I take a potassium vitamin because the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever makes me cramp a lot, so that helps a lot with the cramps. Um, so medicine, they need as long a supply of medicine as they can get and bring it with them because you're not going to have the meds they need. So at least not for daily use. You know, I do prep emergency medical stuff, but that's not a high blood pressure pill for somebody. So, anyway, and then the next thing would be shelter. Um, most tiny houses are under 800 square feet is what I read one time. That was a classification to be a tiny house. Under 800 square feet. My house is 842. So, I didn't build a tiny house. I built a very small house. It's a one bedroom. The bedroom is 14 by 14, so it's a good size room. But, I've got one bedroom. So they need to bring some kind of shelter that they can sleep in. A camper, an RV, if they could get it here. I mean, if, if an EMP hit, 
that thing may not be drivable. So you need to be thinking about tents and other type buildings and things that people can get out of the weather wind and 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 be able to sleep and take care of their families. So that's what I've got on my list is, you know, you will need to bring tents and accessories for sleeping. So if people want to bring air mattresses, then they need to bring the air mattress, but they also need to bring some kind of pump to pump that air mattress up. You know, just because I've got one doesn't mean one's going to work. Um, so they need to think like that. They need the sheets for the bed and the blankets and all of that stuff. So that's the next thing on my list is blankets, lots of blankets, at least two blankets per person. Because if you're in a unheated home, or building or tent and it's cool in your house you'd be fine but out there in a tent or an uninsulated building you're gonna get pretty cold without those blankets so people need to bring some I've got a few extra but there's no way I can store that many for one thing but um, the next thing I put on there was guns and ammo and I put that together for a reason one because one's not any good without the other I can have all the ammo in the world if I don't have a firearm to shoot it. Or I can have all the firearms in the world if I don't have any bullets. It's just a boat anchor, okay? So, guns and ammo. And how many did I say on this list? All you can carry. It's going to take a lot. Because everybody out there that finds out you've got a can of beans and they don't, they want that can of beans. You better be able to protect it. So, uh, the next thing I put on the list and this is not something I've seen on other people's lists, but definitely on mine would be cannon jars, lids, and rings. And the reason I put that on there is because if you grow food or harvest animals, you need to be able to preserve that food and make it last through the time of the year where you can't get it, such as wintertime when you can't grow a garden and so on. So I put lots and lots, at least 120 jars. 120. Those that do a lot of canning knows 120 jars is not a drop in the bucket to what you're going to need. But if they brought that 120 jars, hey, they made one heck of an effort to try to prep, right? So, I'm, I'm, you know, those are going to be in short supply after crap hits the fan because everybody and their brother is going to need it. Um, and then I put seeds. And the, what I put under seeds was all types of vegetables that you and your family eat. People always say, what kind of seeds? What do you like? You like cabbage? No. What? Don't buy cabbage seeds. <laughs> you like jalapeno peppers? No. <laughs> Don't buy jalapeno pepper seeds. You like bell peppers? Okay. Buy a bunch of them. You like green beans? Buy a bunch of green bean seeds. You know, buy what you eat. Buying stuff that you don't eat doesn't make sense, okay? You need to buy what you eat, but you also need to also think about if craps hit the fan, protein is where the biggest deficiency is going to be, mostly meats. But there are a lot of things that you can get protein from that are vegetables. A lot of leafy vegetables, um, a buddy told me today kale has got a lot of protein in it. I'm not a big kale eater, but you bet if I need it, I'm going to eat it. Um, so collard greens, turnips, black eyed peas, um, lima beans. I don't care for lima beans a whole lot, but I will eat them. So you can get protein from a lot of other type beans like pinto beans and black beans and things like that. So be able to plant things that are going to help you nutritionally, but also that you can eat. Um, I am not a hot pepper person. My brother loves it, has always loved it, but it's not for me. I don't like the jalapenos and all that stuff. So I'm not going to plant any of that in my prepper garden, okay? If I was growing it to make pepper jelly like my ex used to do or to give away or sell, great. It does. People want it. But me, myself, if I've got to use that space to feed myself, I'm not going to plant something I'm not going to eat. So let me see where we're at on time. All right, we're good. And uh, then I said, um, you and your family are welcome to join my group. So in my group, there is close to 70 people. Now, I don't know about y'all, but 70 people is a lot of people. 
That's a lot of mouths to feed. That's a lot of laundry that's got to be done. That's a lot of meals that's got to be prepared. That's a lot of food that's got to be harvested, grown, taken care of, a lot of hunting, a lot of fishing, all that stuff. There's a lot of things that goes into feeding 70 people. So you and your family are welcome to join the group. Be aware that everyone above the age of, okay, don't shoot the messenger, five is, will be expected to work. So no work, no food. It's the way it goes. If you can't help produce it, why would I want to give it to you? So I was talking with my daughter a little while ago before I started this video, and my, my kids know I don't prep for me. I prep for my kids and their spouses and my grandkids. So every plate of food that I give to somebody else is a plate of food that I take out of my kids and my grandkids' belly. So if you're an adult and you've got kids, are you going to take a plate of food away from your child to give to somebody else? Not if they're hungry promise you won't. You might give it up yourself, but you're not going to take it from your kid. Well, I prep for my kids and my grandkids, and I might go hungry, but they're not going to. So y'all y'all think of that because a lot of people don't put that much thought into it. So everyone above the age of five, five-year-olds can help gather eggs. They can help pull weeds in the garden. They can help pick some vegetables and fruit and things like that. Um, there's a lot of things five-year-olds can do. That it depends on the child. I've got a five-year, well, they're both older than five right now, but I've got some very small grandchildren. And one of them at five, I could not expect to do anything in the garden because I know that child and, you know, it wouldn't work. But there are other things that that grandchild could help do. Then again, on the other hand, one of my other grandchildren that was five would get out there and help pull weeds in the garden without even thinking about it. So every child's different. But for the most part, if they're five years of age or older, they've got to help because... <laughs> Today's society is not ready to go back to the 1800s. So, and I just added a little note at the bottom that says our work schedule is security, five days a week for eight hours. So every person that's old enough and capable of toting a weapon is going to be on security detail eight hours out of a 24-hour day, five days a week. So if those of you that haven't thought about that, that's three people for every 24-hour period times seven. That's 21 people that worked eight hours each. So if they each do 40 hours, that means you need 15 people just to do five days of the week. And then you need nine more people to do the other Oh, I'm sorry, not nine, six more people to do the other two days of the week. So that's 21 total. And if you do that for months and months on end, people are going to get burned out. They're going to drop the guard. They're going to make mistakes. So you need enough people in your group to rotate from this shift to that shift. If people do it seven days a week, they're going to burn themselves out or you're going to burn them out, whatever it may be. So your security plan needs to include that. You need a minimum, all right? And I'm talking about short term, as in two or three weeks or less, you need a minimum of 21 people for security 24 hours a day for three weeks. At that point, people are gonna start getting past the point of exhaustion and burned out. You need fresh people that you can swap with. So. Security is five days a week, eight hours a day. Other community chores are five days a week, four hours a day. And what that does is it leaves an adult 12 hours a day for personal. <coughs> so in that 12 hours, take off, <coughs> excuse me, eight hours for sleep and rest. That leaves you four hours. That's, you know, 
a little bit of time in the morning to get up and get ready for the day and get get to work on your whatever your job may be. And then that gives you two to three hours in the evening to spend with your family and do personal type chores that need to be done, just like they do now. Laundry is going to have to be done. Meals are going to have to be cooked, all of that stuff. So if you think about it, 12 and 12, 12 hours for the group, 12 hours for yourself. And of course, a larger group, you know, the old saying, many hands make light work. So if you've got a larger group like I do with 70 plus people, you're not going to burn them out as easy. And you can rotate through and keep people at their peak performance. So it also means you got more mouths you got to feed, but you want to be able to keep people alert and be able to do their job well and do it safely. So um, my note says personal time is 12 hours a day. We work in shifts of three shifts per day, first, second, and third shifts. So all shifts are on rotation. And that means first shift's going to rotate to second shifts, then they're going to rotate to third shift, and everybody moves the shift forward every so many weeks, whatever your group decides is best for y'all. There are some people that prefer working nights and some people that prefer working days. But you guys that are leaders of the group out there, y'all keep this in mind. Just because someone prefers night shift or second shift or day shift, does not mean that that's the best place for that person to be. You got to put people where it's best for them to be. Because if they're not good at it, they could get themselves hurt or someone else. So you got to keep that in mind. So guys, if you found value, uh, find value in the channel and the topics that we talk about and all of that, please hit that like button and share the channel when you can. And please, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. That helps me grow so much more than you realize. And it doesn't cost you a dime. It's absolutely free. So if you guys could do that for me, I would really, really appreciate it. We've gained another couple in the last few days. So I, I thank you newcomers. I do thank you very much for subscribing. Um, please help us continue to grow the channel. We've got a long way to go. The more people we can help with things like this, the more people we can help open their eyes and teach them what they've got to do to survive when crap hits the fan, the less people you're going to have to compete with because you can be partners instead of opponents. And that's what this channel is all about is building partners. So guys, please remember the two things I always tell you. Jesus loves you and so do I. Y'all be careful out there. Love on your family.